Hi everyone, I'm um, hoping you guys can see this really well. I've got computer set up and camera set up. I've just got to turn the machine on and I'm just checking for a live post on Facebook to get my computer going. There we go. Hi Lynette, hi Teresa and Carolyn, how are you all? Welcome. This is Meet Jack, if you haven't met Jack before. This is Cracker. <laughs> it's Cracker Jack. And uh, this is my, my industrial, which I have set up currently for free motion quilting. You can do this on your sit-down machine. Um, I'm just going to thread the needle. Uh, don't have my eyeballs, still can't find them. I know. Right. So, oh, I can't even see that. I'll Oh, I can't see the bleeding thing, hang on. Hi Maureen, hi Liz. There we go, got it. It's cruel to watch, I know. Oops, the days. There we go. Alrighty, okay, I know I've got odd gloves on, two different pairs, I can find them, but I can't find the other, the other side of them, so I thought I'll just wear these, it makes no difference, they're still the same glove, it's just one is grey and one is black. So, free motion quilting, the fun of. So this is something I've pre-stitched. And uh, this is one of those blocks uh, that I did sell some of you uh, a couple of weeks ago now. Um, this block is um, pre, like I say, pre-printed and I'm going to now just stitch in between. And um, I'm going to just do lots of little, little things and I'll explain to you as I go. With your standard machine, if you're going to free motion quilt on your standard machine, you will need your... Um, uh, free motion foot on which will look something similar to this and or a bouncy one whichever one you decide you'll also need a nice fresh new needle I'm not sure if mine is probably not and you'll need to put your um, tent just your tension on yours this one won't need a tension the this the, the, the tension adjusted because um, being industrial doesn't need to I don't need to um, You'll also need to have your feed dogs down. That's um, very important so that you can move it. And with this industrial, I just have it all sitting, the stitch on this one, I have it sitting on zero, and that, that sorts that out. You'll need a pair of gloves. Um, they're fairly important. Whether you have these gloves, which is something that I bring in and put in, or whether you have other gloves, you have to have gloves. Something that will stop your, um, the, the tension in your hands, your arms, and, and that sort of thing. You also want to have it so that your arms are level with the table that you're at, level with your machine and your needle, uh, sorry, and you're sitting head on to your needle. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else that you might need to know. A slider mat can also help. Um, it'll help with a bit of traction that's underneath. You can always use that as well. And uh, But any, any machine that the feed dogs can go down in can do free motion it might like the cheaper machines might not have as nice a stitch but it'll still do it if that if that makes sense um, I'm just gonna because this is just a sample piece and that I'm just going to bury my thread so to do that I've got the thread on the outside here and I'm going to put my needle in the down position and I'm just doing that manually for now um, there. and this is pedal controlled I did that but anyway it did. Um, 
So, oh, it's got cut off, that's all right. No, that was, that's falling back, falling back. It's probably what it was, a falling back thing. So I'll just bring that up. Make sure I'm in the down position when I start. So whenever I stop and start, I have the needle in the down position. Now, if you've got any questions whatsoever at any given time, please ask me. Um, you know, don't be frightened to stop or ask me whatever you need to know. Okay, you also want to have a nice area so that you've got area to move um, and the one thing I do notice when I'm working with people who are doing quilting, um, teaching them any kind of quilting, I notice that um, they, they tend to, what is a slider mat, sure Cecily, I'll explain that in a second, um, is that they tend to feed, so they're picking up and they're feeding it like they're piecing. When you're free motion quilting, your hands stay in one position until you need to move them. Cecily, a slider mat is a, um, it's a mat that it goes underneath here, covers this, all this area here. Um, hi Beverly, and it actually makes it smoother. It's a, like a silicon mat, it's sort of tacky on one side, not sticky but tacky and the other side is really smooth like silicon and um, it means that when you're pushing this around it doesn't actually um, grab and reduces the tension, uh, the friction in the build up. I'm just going to move that out of the way because I know it's about to um, get in the way. Um, just so you guys know what I'm doing, hang on, let me just get something. Uh, this is the iron of one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm literally going to echo in here and come in till I finish in the centre. Um, so you can decide and draw a drawing in each area that you're going to do. Um, and I'm going to use the, um, the actual width of the foot. So that width of that foot is going to sort of run along there, which means my needle's going to be around about a quarter inch coming in grip and push too hard any tips on how not to yep Beverly um, if you get a pair of gloves like if you got gloves you wear gloves these make you use the palm of your hand okay which means you can't grab you don't need to grab um, turn the free motion it doesn't sew correctly back of the fabric with the retention I just heard you mention yeah okay I'll come back to that Julie uh, the other thing too is you've got to make that mental note to drop your shoulders um, and uh, yeah you've, you've literally got to make that mental note of not gripping and pushing you're not really pushing you're just guiding all right now when I turn the free motion when I turn the free motion it doesn't sew correctly back of the fabric would that be the tension I just heard you mentioned yes so if you're back of your fabric has like eyelashes or there's eyelashing on the front that'll be your tension so your tension needs to be tighter with free motion quilting so if your tension is normally on around about a four for everyday stitching chuck it on about a five of a six okay it needs to be tighter um, and that might change and make the difference okay all right now it's been a while since I've used Cracker Jack she's you know she could crack it on me, <laughs> literally. So I'm just going to cut that little thread. Um, the other thing too is it's not a race. They're really crappy scissors. I don't know why I've got them there. Um, not a race, okay. I always stop with the needle in the fabric too, so make sure you've got that. And I'm just going to cut off. I can hear you, but picture frozen. Oh, that's a bit strange. So I've just done that there. That hole there is where the needle was sitting. That'll go away. Relax when the fabric does. I'll put my hand behind it. There you go. You see it there? So that's just stitch that area. 
nice and quick and then we go to the next area and we just do the same so I'm going to work from in here and up, needle down come on down you go and I put one hand here and the other hand I've literally just got my three fingers underneath little finger to my pointers on top and my thumbs on top and that means that I'm just directing it I'm not really um, I'm not hanging on for dear life get that monkey grip and if you notice when I moved my hands I didn't do it until I paused so my hands haven't moved see how my hands haven't moved So that's the next section. Nice and easy, isn't it? Section one, section two. Easy peasy. We can do that on all four corners. Another one. The other thing too is keeping the speed on your hands the same as much as you can. Unless you're doing circles and stuff like that, then you do have to change your hand speed. Um, but for just simple straight lines or sort of semi straight lines, you don't need to, um, you know, be going 100 mile an hour with the hands. Um, I do often, when people have the slider, you know, the slider for the fast and slow thing, a lot of the time I'll take their foot out of the, the actual machine and get them just to use that and a stop-start button. A lot of them have a stop-start button and then they can just stop and start. But that means that your stitching is always going to be the same as long as your hands stay the same. Does that make sense? Oh, have I come unthreaded? Have I come unthreaded? Oh, I mossed myself today. I said I haven't done that for ages. I did, I mossed myself. You don't have these little needle threaders they are like three dollars for five of them they're so cheap and they are the best little things And because I'm doing black on black, um, you won't see any little indiscretions. Anyone have any questions yet?
someone what answer did it do. I bet it did. <clears throat> How annoying. Sorry, it's just been a bit of a poop. Here we go. Finally. <clears throat> What's the quilting pattern, please? Okay, at the moment I am just echoing, Tracy. Um, miss the beginning again. Are you changing cotton colour for each section? No, this this was a... Um, I, I've already stitched this one. So this was uh, done on a very, with a variegated thread. And now I'm just doing the black on black area. Are your eyeballs the are you eyeballing the pattern or was it marked or was it marked on the Oh no, I'm just eyeballing. Yep, and what's the quilting pattern? Yep, just a echoing at the moment. This is just echo. Nothing exciting. Um we'll start with that. Those scissors are horrible. Horrible. So I'm using the foot as a bit of a guide um, as to how far away I am from the next one. And the original pattern, this is a pre-printed one. Oh, don't you tell me you've come out again. Oh, you little booger. Um, this is a pre-printed panel. I will have to have a look, see if I've got any ones of these left. I don't have any black left. They're all gone. Um, but I might have it in on the natural colour. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, nice. Thank you. I don't know why it keeps coming out. It's giving me it irritants. There we go. Okay, so we've done those. Um, those little areas there, we've just stitched them on each corner there. And uh, we're going to now do these other areas. So it doesn't need a huge amount of stitching, which is really good. So it means that I don't have to fluff around with it too much. Um, I'm really just stitching because I can. Um, yeah, so otherwise it really doesn't need much. So I'm going to just come in here. I don't know if I can put that down. Hope you're okay, Jimmy. Oh, good Arvo. Yeah, I haven't seen you all day, Jimmy. I hope you're well. Okay, so this one I'm going to do a little bit of circles. So a little bit around one way, then back around the other. Around one way, then round back the other. And then I'm going to come all the way back around and work my way down. And fill in those areas. And then I'm going to lift and pick up my foot a little, okay, and I'm going to just jump over here, put my needle down, and I'm just going to keep going in here, and then I'm going to jump over to this one. So I'm not cutting off, I'm just going just a wavy one this time. Back and forth, nice wave. And you can see my hands are not lifting up off the fabric. Does that make sense to you all? Hey, I'm fine, I was GP and review. They got, got to, oh, okay, good. So needle in the up position, lift up your foot, just a, wait, up, e, and 
come over here and I'm going to do that wavy pattern again around here and then I'm going to fill in that one and I'll jump over to the next. Because the least amount of time that I have to cut off, the better. It's less fabric, uh, less, sorry, less thread waste, less time waste. I don't have to, you know, um, bury the threads because there's a little knot at the front and the start and, you know, finish. Um, so it's all good. So lift up, go over, down, and just do some circles. And this is the kind of foot I was talking about when I was doing the demo with the pounce pads. Just a foot that's designed for rulers or free motion, um, but it, you know, it doesn't bounce on the fabric. So I'll lift up, and I'll just come up over here. I'll do this one, and then move it down. And I'm just going to do a bit of a zigzag there. Lift up. Up it is. Jump one and needle down. And I'm just going to go. Little, I'm going to do that wave again, but I'm going to come back on it so it creates like a pea pod type effect. Circles back. Alright, then needle up and lift the foot up. I had one the other day it was overdue by six months because I was in and out of hospital with the pizza. Ah, better. Alright, so I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to continue on what I've done over here. So that one, that one, every second one. So I'm going to start with that one. So foot down, needle down. This one gives me an extra because I've only ever had two. So one, two, three, it gives me two extras. Um, so I'm going to do some circles here, I'm going to do the wavies here, circles there, actually no, I'll go the other way, so circles, wavy, circle, wavy, so wavy first. So I'm alternating. Wavy, up and back, nice and quick. Then lift up. Oh, that's all right, Debbie. I was just making sure I wasn't missing anything that I was supposed to be watching for. And then we got circles. So we do the wavy thing and we come back. All right, so needle down. So that was the one I did before. I don't know if you can see that there. It's a bit hard to see just here. Um, but picture's frozen. Oh, okay. So what I'm doing is, I'll just draw it here, is I'm going one way like that for me wavies. And when I want to make it a circle, I come back like that. Yeah? So it becomes like a pea pod in between two lines. So let's do this. And back. Is it Michelle who gave me the confidence to do? Oh, that's good. That's good to be so tired, being asleep all day. Hi, Linda. Oh, sweetheart, you poor love. Well, hopefully we can cheer you up a little. Wavy ones. And if you've got a closed-toed foot, Jimmy, you can put your finger there. And you actually might get it stitched on. When it's an open toe foot, that's when your finger can go in where it shouldn't go. Just FYI. And this one down the bottom, a little bit different. Instead of it being a line, it's going to be circles. And they're going to be go one way and back around the other. Go three quarters away around or halfway around. And then fill in another. Just follow it back around. 
a little, a little bit like a figure eight and you just keep following over the top. So I'm going to do that. So go one way, back around the other, back around, then I'm going backwards the other way, then I'm going forwards, all the way around, backwards, forwards, a little one in there, and then that. And we can, I have both, and yes, I got a stitch. <laughs> Bet you did. All right, so I've done that one side already, and all I've had to do is jump in between each one, nice and quick. This one here, I know I need to do this bit. Put that down. Oops, a daze, put my foot down first, and needle down. And this is my wavy, and then my circle. So, wavy. It's got caught. What do you do with all those decorative squares when finished? Um, you can join these together and make a quilt out of them, you can make them into a pillow, you can just use them as a decorative and and um, hang them on your wall, um, anything you like to do, use them as a bag panel, anything you like. We're just doing the circles which are more like figure eights. <coughs> Lift up. I'll come over here and do me a little zigzag while I'm opening the area. Okay. Right, a little chevron, so up, more of a straight line, up, just like that, lift up. And we're going to do those that uh, circles, so we're going to wavy one way and come back the other. So, up the other way today, there we go. back and fill in those gaps. That's done. Lift up. And then come over here. Back down. Needle down. Down. And we're going to do our wavy. section and some circles. Which are like figure eights. Lift up, foot up, and we're going to do exactly what I did in the other corner. And we're going to go up here and we're going to do that half sort of wavy one. And then we we'll do a row of circles. Okay, one up. And lift it up. Okay, jump one row. And then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to come back. Needle down, we'll go one way and then come back. So. Sort of doing a half circle, going one way, doing a half circle, and then literally come back and fill in the opposite way, and it makes it look like circles. I would have done this as a kid too. And then jump one, and we'll do some wavies. <coughs> Whoops, it is. Put down. And then needle up, foot up. We're going to go and do those circles.
and they can be wobbly little pebbles, they can be anything, they can be just a, a, a um, stipple, it can be anything you like. Lift up, turn your fabric around. So if you notice, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't really been lifting my hands up unless I've stopped. Okay, so we're going to do this one. And we've got our weighty again. Getting used to what I'm doing. Oh, wait, we've got caught. So we've got caught on that. There we go. Got caught on my foot. So if you look at my hands, they don't move. As in, they don't lift off the fabric. But I'm moving my hands. And they're very, very lightly sitting on there. And these gloves mean that I can put my hands down flat and my fingers are free so if i need to change thread or anything i can do that we had such a big storm last night i opened my bedroom doors onto the veranda and got back into bed and watched the rain and lightning oh that would have been awesome um we had a dry storm yes yeah we had the same dry storm pretty much down and we're going to do those circles so again i'm not lifting my hands Just in one spot. Some more wavies. There we go. All you have to do when you finish this is go around and just snip those threads. Don't forget we're going live. Does your machine automatically tie off the threads? Yes, yeah, this one, it actually, um, it does a knot off, yeah. Just make sure we've got that. Yeah, so it'll do it, even though it's an industrial, it will do that. This one here, I have my oh, wavy, then a circle, and then a wavy, and then circle, so let's do that wavy. It's a brilliant machine. They're very reasonable. They're just over the three thousand dollar mark. Um, it's got a very big throat. They do a cut off. They do a start like a, a start and reverse stitch. So and it finishes well. They will go through leather and all sorts of things. They're brilliant. Um, what the noise you can hear in the background is my daughter wandering around. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, they'll also, um, you can free motion with them obviously, as well as sewing bags and things like that together. And uh, the other thing, they come with the table, they come in the table, they, they uh, come on coasters, like casters, sorry, not coasters, casters, and um, so they're easy to wheel around. And the stitching is just beautiful. It, this um, variegated thread part that's on this has been done with this machine. Um, <coughs> very quiet compared to a standard machine and most industrials, it's very quiet. I do tend to give a bit of a, a jack pack at the same time. Uh, and I do, um, I do deliver and install. There you go, there's my plug. So the wavy one, but pretty hard to kill. 
and the parts and feet and everything like it are really cheap. They're like 15 bucks, some of these feet. They're really cheap. And when you buy it, um, and it actually winds its bobbin on for you while you're, you're working. So while it's using one bobbin, you just wind another one on. Okay, circles. And to wheel around, it's very light. Did you deliver to Fern Tree Gully? Yes, I do, Tracy Ryan, I do. Hey, if I'll go to South Australia, I'll come to you in Fern Tree Gully. My oath I will, honey bun. We'll spend a day together. Bloody oath. <laughs> All right, we're on the home run. This is the last side. So we're going to do another one. Love that Linda James sound. Oh, it's very relaxing, that listening to that um, thunder and lightning. Getting a light show. So I also, yeah, I give you some freebies to start off with um, and um, come and show you how to, how to uh, work it. You got 20 minutes, girlfriend. Mm, just right in. Hey? Just right in. Uh, yeah. Tracy? Absolutely, girlfriend. And the good thing about them, because they're on coasters, um, if you've got a little amount of room, you can. Oh, there goes my bobbin, I think. Um, you can actually just wheel it out of the way, put a sheet over it, cover it up for dust. It does come with a little dust cover, but, you know sort of one of those plastic ones or make your own just to get that bobbin and to change the bobbin on it all you do it's side loading which is awesome take that out just pop that there and here's my full one it's been doing can you cut some more mm -hmm. why not I need to not you need to know. Okay. Not that you believe it, really, but that's what does it. Okay. No, I know, it hurts back, I know. Mm -hmm. Because I get it too. I know, yeah. which doesn't mean that I can't. No, I didn't say that. No, you arguing with you. <laughs> no, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> okay, that one there. Just gonna lift up. I've got the foot up already, silly woman. So then at that empty one, <clears throat> just take that thread out of it, so that one there, whoops it is, and that goes on the top here, and I think it goes this way, I always get it wrong, but anyway, I'll soon find out, and it starts winding, and as I stitch, it winds on, so you can lift, I don't think that's right, <clears throat> come on, up you come. <coughs> Still got that cough, that thing, hack. Alright, where did I get to? Over here. So nice quick change. What machine are you using, talking about? Oh, sorry Nikki, uh, this is a jack and it is an A6F. It is an industrial machine. It, um, they are just a brilliant machine. Um, especially if you want, it's just straight stitch, no fanciness, so very little goes wrong with them. Um, they're computerised, but very simple. I'm just going to get that bit of thread out of the way. Right. And I like the A6F because it actually has what they call a needle feed, where when you're stitching um, and doing things like um, yeah, uh, like so piecing and things like that. The needle actually steps forward as it moves the fabric forward. It steps forward. So the stitches are even each and every time. It's just beautiful. It's really, really, really smooth. Let's see these eggs there. Jeff and I bought a full poster bed today. Who would have thought I 
found a wonderful man who loved most of the things I do. It's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. That is fabulous. You're very lucky. And he's very lucky to have you. Alright, so we'll just do some wavies. And what I'll do is I'll get some paper in a minute and I will demo drawing wise exactly what I've done. And it'll be even easier for you to understand. And over here. And the wavy one. I'm just moving the cotton out, cotton out of the way. So do you want to grab me a couple of bits of paper and um, a black texture? It's so good that you guys are getting along and really enjoying each other's company, Linda. It's well deserved. You're a lovely woman and he's obviously a lovely man and he's very lucky to have you, sweetheart. And the last little corner we're going to do is that one. Yeah. Yeah. So next time. And copying the last corners, I've got a wavy, then a circle one, and a wavy, and then circle. Running late, Yvonne, that's okay. You'll be able to watch the replay. So we're going to do a wavy. I'm just going to talk about in a minute what I've done. I haven't quilted it to death, but I've made sure it's quilted. Pick up. Same thing, but come back on it. How many curves I do depends on how big and wide I make them, and that'll also depend on that'll make the amount of circles that I have. So, Last one, little circles. And we're done. So I can then cut off. So by pressing the foot, it'll cut off for me. And I have done all those little areas. So you can see those, see? Those areas. I don't really need to do anything in the middle. It's pretty full on in there. Um, I've just stitched the outside just so that it's a little bit more stitched in there. Um, really just decorative. Doesn't need a lot. And all these little white lines where I've, <laughs> I've missed come off the line. See, I've come off the line there. That white chalk line will wash out. All that chalk will wash out. So that's all awesome. Thanks, Linda. <clears throat> I had convinced myself I would die alone and lonely. He came into my life just at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's the beauty of it, Linda. He's come in when you've needed each other and that is exactly what should happen. Now, it's meant to be the old kismet thing. This one here. So when you've got, when you want to do that wavy bit, so if I've got two areas I'm going to work in. Let me get that there. See if I can actually see if I can just adjust this a little bit more. There we go. Try that. <clears throat> so I'll start down one area, come up, down, up, down, up, down. And it's pretty much that movement. It's like an S. So if you can do an S you can do that. Okay, very easy. 
When I want to make it into a circle, I do the exact same thing. Up, down, up, down, up, down. And then I come back on the last one and I fill in. And then all of a sudden I have circles. Do you see how that works? They look like teeth, don't they? <laughs> all right, when I want to do that triangular sort of little area that we had there um on, what have we got so it was like that more so that's sort of area when i want to do the circles i'll just show you here circle around once go halfway around or three quarts whatever travel around and go the opposite direction so i've started that way now i'm going the other way now i'm coming back and I want to get back over here, so follow around, back in there. And not to make it look like a four, do that little circle in the middle, come in and make them different sizes, back and forwards, left and right. But they're more of a figure eight than they are just a circle. Okay, so just like that. So once you're in here and you start with your circle, go back around, back around, go around the other way, and then you come back and fill in. Back and fill in. Okay. Fill in, fill in, fill in there. And you can do that big one in there. And that fills in that area. All right, does that make sense? Everyone's sort of following me on that? <clears throat> there was one other little one that I did, and it was only in a small area, and it was a bit of a chevron, very small. I just went straight up, down, up, down, that sort of thing. And that made another row. So it doesn't have to be rocket science to fill up an area. It can be very, very simple. So do I need to, do you want me to show you any of those again? Or any of those need to be shown again? We're all good so far. good all right well that's that's it for this demo thank you so much for joining me um and i appreciate all the time you spent with me in the last week or two months months years <laughs> and um i look forward to seeing you guys soon and there's some of that there this actual design um i'll tell you if i've got any of those No, not, none left, no. All good, no worries. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Appreciate you, and I will see you guys soon. Talk to you soon. Bye.